And Peter was rejecting Jesus three different times. Jesus told him, Peter, you will deny me three times this day before the rooster crows or the cock crows, depending on what version you're reading. But now the same Peter is going to give a message where 3,000 people will get saved and baptized in the same message. See, that is a God who is a game changer. That is a God who keeps people, no, you're no longer bound to whatever you had binding you before you became a born-again believer. Jesus Christ tore the veil, broke out, of, broke out of the grave, rose up to heaven and is by the right hand of the heavenly Father. So you are free, you are no longer chained, no longer bound, and it's a brand new day if you know Jesus. Amen. But, you know, today is the day that we celebrate Jesus as being resurrected. Amen. And let's go to Acts chapter 2, verse 29. And I want to read some verses from there, and then I want to go into some other scriptures. But, you know... Today is a day that represents victory. Today is a day where Jesus defied death, hell, and the grave. The grave couldn't hold them. Death, death couldn't hold them, and the grave couldn't keep them. Amen? And here you have Peter. Now, this is Peter given his first message after the day of Pentecost or on the day of Pentecost when 3,000 people get saved. The same Peter. Now, see, the reason I'm bringing this scripture up, this was not part of what I was going to do today until I walked in the building. The reason this is important, because remember on Good Friday when we saw the video, we watched the different screens. Remember the scene where they were beating Jesus? And Peter was rejecting Jesus three different times. Jesus told him, Peter, you will deny me three times this day before the rooster crows or the cock crows, depending on what version you're reading. But now the same Peter is going to give a message where 3,000 people will get saved and baptized in the same message. See, that is a God who is a game changer. That is a God who keeps people, no, you're no longer bound to whatever you had binding you before you became a born-again believer. Jesus Christ tore the veil, broke out, of, broke out of the grave, rose up to heaven and is by the right hand of the heavenly Father. So you are free, you are no longer chained, no longer bound, and it's a brand new day if you know Jesus. Amen? Let's read. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulcher is with us to this day. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He seeing this before he spoke of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we are all witnesses. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this, which now you see and hear, the word of the Lord. You may be seated. You see, here's Peter talking about 
Jesus being raised from the dead. See, hell couldn't keep, he's not in hell, he's in heaven. The grave couldn't keep him, death couldn't keep him, death couldn't hold him down. Jesus is in heaven with the heavenly father right now, amen. He, uh, he spent 40 days, 40 more days on earth, and then he took off and was ascended into the clouds to be with the heavenly father where he is to this day. Now, you may be like, pastor, but how does that make me have victory? Well, didn't we sing a song earlier that says, I'm alive in you? Christ is alive in you, and you're alive in him. See, because he lives, you can say, I'm no longer bound. Because he lives, you can say, I am no longer in chains. See, that enemy wants to put you in chains. How, what, kind, what, what change are you talking about? I'm talking about change of fear. Right now, he's got the world chained to the fear of the coronavirus. A virus that truly is not as deadly as many other things that have attacked us in the past. But the way it's being spread and the propaganda of the media has this world literally losing their minds over this virus to where they're shutting everything down. Church, they're trying to keep churches from eating. Trying to, they, they've already shut the movies down. They've shut games down, sports down, casinos. Well, a lot of it, casinos and strip clubs and all those kind of things. Well, they're not too good for people anyway. But ev even the things that are, you know, entertaining that aren't, quote, bad for people, God is, not allow God is allowing this virus to shut it down, to bring attention to Jesus. Amen. I believe that there's going to be a shifting and revival is going to come out. I've said it almost every week. There's going to be a revival that's going to come out of this coronavirus. Even if it's the beginning of what some believe the new world order being put into place. By the way, these governments are all coming together and making decisions for the whole world. There are a lot of, there's, there's, there's prophets, prophets and believers out there that believe that this is the beginning stages of the new world order. I believe it's the beginning of Jesus coming. And it could possibly be the beginning of the new world order. But even with the beginning of the new world order, I believe there will be a remnant church rise up and bring revival and defy the new world order. Amen? See, because we're here to worship Jesus till the day he comes. And then when he comes, we're going to worship Jesus. See, because we are no longer bound. We're no longer bound. I don't know any other, quote, God that can claim that they were crucified, beaten beyond recognition, but survived death and is alive today. There's no other God. Uh, I hate to tell the Muslim nation, but uh, Muhammad's dead. Muhammad's not alive. Muhammad is dead and gone. Buddha is dead and gone. I could go to any one of their graves if I knew where they were, and I could get an archaeologist, and I could dig up their bones. But let me tell you something. You go to the tomb where the stone was rolled away, and there's no bones in my Savior's tomb. There's no bones where they laid my Savior down. Come on, give him praise. Because he lives, we're no longer bound. We are no longer chained to the lifestyle that that devil wants you to have. That devil wants you running around in fear. That devil wants you running around claiming sickness. That devil wants you running around believing every little word of hype media that you hear. That devil wants you to go to the doctor and believe that report that they give you. But my Jesus says, because I live, you're not chained. You're not bound to any of that. Come on, give him praise. You see, in Luke 24, it says, now upon the first day of the week, very clearly in the morning they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. You see, because of the time it was, they weren't able to prepare the body because they were getting ready to go into Passover. So now they could come when they were able to do it. And it was the Sabbath, so they couldn't do anything to the body. They had to rush them right off to the grave. So here they come to do their, what they think they have to do. And they found the stone rolled away 
from the sepulcher. But they didn't stop there. The word says, and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Can you imagine? Can you just imagine? You saw him die on the cross. You saw him pulled off the cross. You saw him carried away and wrapped up and put in the grave. You saw the stone rolled and put in front of the tomb. And now you go there and the stone is missing. The stone is moved. And you walk in and you're like, where is my Savior? And they were afraid and bowed their faces down to the earth. And they said unto them, oh, oh, let me go back. And it came to pass that there was much perplexed thereabout. You'd be confused too. Behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth. They said unto them, why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spoke unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Remember, there was a time where he was standing and he told them, I will re- rebuild this temple in three days. They were like, what? No way. This whole place? He was talking about his temple. He knew what was going to happen to him. He knew. That's why in the Garden of Gethsemane, he was like, Lord, Father, please, if you could let this thing pass for me, please let this child pass for me. But no matter what, let thy will be done, not mine. Because he knew what was coming. See, because he lives, we can say that I am no longer bound. I am no longer chained. I am no longer bound to the natural way of life. See, you can tap into the spiritual realm through the Holy Spirit, and you can live a life that's free from that devil's grasp. Now, is he going to stop trying? Absolutely not. He's going to try to chase you down, hunt you down, and get you into situations to come against your faith, your belief, to try to get fear, doubt, unbelief. He'll hit you with sickness. He'll hit you with all kinds of things. But as a Christian, you should be able to plant your feet firm. And out of any day you know in the year, you can say, no, 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 because my Christ died and my Christ rose again. Come on, give God praise. Why do you think we add that in the sinner's prayer? Why do you think we say, I believe you died and you rose again just for me? See, he didn't die just for pastors, preachers, bishops, deacons, and -and so-and-sos, or whoever you think you are with God. He died for all mankind. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. See, Jesus died for the the little little homeless man on the street. Jesus died for the person living in the woods behind our church. Jesus died for the guy in the penthouse right now. Jesus died for whoever, whatever wants him and needs him. And everybody is welcome in the kingdom of God. Come on, give God praise. And I know I'm shouting a lot today, but it's Resurrection Sunday. And I got a shout up in my bones today. Jesus died for the man that's locked up on a life sentence in prison right now. Even if he murdered 30 people, he may never get out of jail. But if he gives his life to Christ while he's behind bars or in court, wherever it happened, and asks for forgiveness, God has forgiven him. He's got to do man's sentence, but God has forgiven him. And you will see that murderer in heaven. Pastor, whoa, I'm going to be in heaven with murderers. You're not going to care. Listen, I'm going to tell you what. There's going to be some Catholics in heaven. There's going to be Protestants in heaven. There'll be converted Muslims, converted Jews in heaven. It's not going to matter because when you get up there, you're just all going to be worshiping Jesus, washed in the blood of Jesus, and happy you're on the streets paved with gold, and you're on that side of the gates. Amen? Not going to matter. 
There's going to be black people, white people, Mexican people, Puerto Rican people. There's going to be all kinds of nations, of many nations and many tribes and many tongues are going to be in heaven. And why is that possible? Because my Christ died and my Christ rose again. Come on, give him praise in here today. You see, how many remember the story of Lazarus? Lazarus was in the tomb four days, dead and gone. They had sent for Jesus prior. When, when they sent him, they said, Jesus, the one that thou lovest is sick. One thing I always stuck out, but they didn't say the one that loves you. See, they knew that Lazarus had a special place in Jesus' heart. Lazarus would always be, and, and, it, they, and sister, they would be laying at Jesus' feet, and they just loved on Jesus. Now you got Lazarus is sick, and Jesus says, you know what? Let's just chill out another couple days. The one that loves me sick, but it's not going to end in death, so let's just hang. And the reason I believe he did that, because he knew when he got there, he'd be dead, and he'd be put in the grave, and he would be able to say, roll away the stone. Now here, you got Jesus in John eleven twenty five 25, talking to one of Lazarus' sisters, and he says to her, Jesus said under, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet he shall live. And whoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believeth thou this. So even if you're dead in the sin of adultery right now, even if you're dead in the sin of smoking crack or smoking meth, God can make you alive through the resurrection of his son Jesus. You can give your life to Jesus and he can resurrect. What is resurrect? Maybe you have fallen down and you're sin. And you've fallen, and you feel like that old lady on the commercial. Help, I've fallen, and I can't get up. But I need to tell you, the word resurrection means to make standing again or to bring back to life. You may feel like your life is over, but I'm here to tell you today, Jesus can bring you back to life. You may feel like you've fallen down and can't get up. Well, Jesus has his hand stretched out to you saying, come on, my child, get up. Let's move forward. Because I live, you are no longer bound come on give him praise and i can't wait till this social distance is over because i can't stand being chained to this platform i want man I, I, six feet hallelujah Woo! i'm tired of this social distance and mess revelations 1 he says i am the alpha i am the omega the beginning and the end, said the Lord, which is and was and is to come, the Almighty. That covers it all. He's got every area of your life covered. You are the apple, the sparkle in God's eye. Each and every one of you in here today. Every one of you in here today. Every one of you on whichever app or platform you're watching us online. You are the apple of God's eye. And he wants to bless you. He wants to provide you with all that you need, all that you desire. He wants to most importantly give you the love of him and his son. And he wants to provide you with eternal life and victory while you live here on this planet. He wants to make you part of the remnant that's going to rise up even during the middle of this coronavirus. And say, devil, we won't take no more. Devil, get your hand off my people. Devil, get your hand. Even pray for nations that you don't like. Devil, get your hand off of this country. Get your hand off of that country. And God say, well, let my people live let my people go in jesus name if it's the end times well praise god i'm glad to be a part of it but the trumpet shall blow that jesus is king and the king lives and all who want to come to him are welcome in the king's family to eat from the king's table come on give god praise and here you go ephesians 4 verse 8 because i know it's 12 o'clock we're getting close to time it says, wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what it is but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. He descended is the same also that ascended far up above all the heavens 
that he might fill all things. See, when he descended into the lower parts of the earth, that's when he went down and had a little face-to-face with Satan. He said, listen, give me back the keys to my kingdom. Give me back the keys to hell, death, and the grave. I mean, Satan never had the keys to the kingdom, but he had the keys to hell, death, and the grave. Now, if it was me and I was Jesus, I would have put my foot on that devil's neck as I took the keys. But he took them keys back and said, let my people go. Then he ascended up to heaven. He came back. The stone was rolled away. And then what I love the most is not only was the stone rolled away, he appeared on the planet for 40 days. Hundreds of people saw the same man that was crucified on a Friday. They saw him walking around on the earth giving messages about the kingdom of God. Peter and them were out fishing one day. This is after, and they, after Jesus had gone. And they come out and they see someone on the shores and there's a fire burning. And, Jesus, and they realize it's the Lord and Peter gets out the boat and starts running to the, to, the, to the shores. And there's Jesus with a meal provided, a fire burning, and then Jesus disappears. You see, God's got all you need and he wants to provide for you. But the only thing holding you, him back is us. Will you trust in him for the rest of your life? Will you, in the deepest part of your mind and heart and your will and your emotions, be satisfied with the unction that my Savior lives and I am no longer bound by anything that the enemy wants to put on me or anything that man wants to put on me? I am free. I am free because he is the resurrection and the life. And I believe and whosoever believes shall be free. And I am free in Jesus name. 